Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about is magic a waste of money? A lot of my audience members, you guys are younger, uh, you probably live with your parents, or you are like at high school and college and making ends meet. Magic seems incredibly expensive. Maybe you had somebody, uh, let's say a mom and dad or a girlfriend, boyfriend, who told you magic doesn't make any sense, you should quit it, it's too expensive, why are you spending money on it? Um, yeah, I, here's my, the reason I don't believe magic is a waste of money. Magic actually is a highly intellectual game. Uh, there's many, many different variances and that makes it very fun. Uh, the fact is not the best, the best deck does not always win and you can lose to anybody. I guess that's the greatest appeal of Magic, just like poker, you can be an amateur poker player and you can win a lot of money. And you can be an amateur Magic player and you can do well at a Friday Night Magic. I'm not saying, like, I'm not going to talk about Pro Tours or I don't actually go to that, those, or GPs. I don't tend to go to that many GPs or Invitationals. But at your local game store, you can be new and you can get better at it and it is intellectually stimulating. Um, you do, do have to do math, you do have to uh, plan, and planning is one of the key elements of being, uh, having you know a good life is what do you plan to do and can you plan turns in the future. Very similar to chess, you have to not think about right now and actually the best deck I have for that is actually the most illogical deck that does this. I play a lot of aggro. Aggro, you do have to plan in the future. You have to plan your, what your outs are. If you have lightning bolts left in your deck and you can get them, your opponent down to free life and you're going, you're going to top deck it, that's a lot of times I do that is I will sacrifice all my little guys and I know they're going to get sacrificed just so I can plan a top deck two or even four turns later in the game, uh, Convoke the Flames, no not Convoke the Flames, uh, Stoke the Flames, I plan all the time and the, the, pretty much Stoke the Flames is my out all the time. I'm like okay come on I need that out and uh, just keep that one goblin around. And yeah so secondly uh, magic cards can actually be traded and sold for value and they are extremely liquid which I talk about in the stealing video and stuff like that, but that's all, I mean, they are like, it's like cash. People will give you money for magic cards very easily. You can go to any local game store. I'm pretty sure most of them have a buy list. You can sell them online easily to a Channel Fireball, a Star City Games, or a Strike Zone online, and it is extremely liquid. So when you look at the value of entertainment, so if you've view magic as a form of entertainment, not as a business, not as a money-making machine, and definitely not as an investment, then you get your value from that entertainment. Even if you don't break even. And a lot of people will say, oh, well, I break even, I'm gone, affinity, what is it called? I've gone where you get enough credit every time you can just rebuy it. Uh, I've done that. You can. Some people have done that. I believe that's true. And yeah, going infinite, I believe that's what it's called, which is pretty close to going infinity. <laughs> anyway, that could also happen, which but you shouldn't expect that. You should not expect that to happen. And if you compare it to other hobbies that you could be doing, like um, any other hobby, really is more expensive than magic, especially draft and sealed, because the time you're spending in the store is ridiculous. Like if you spend four hours at Dave and Buster's. Even on a Wednesday when games are half off, I'm going to play about $40 of games. So about $10 an hour. And that's not even like bad. That's like me being, well, me like on regular pace of playing games. Or if you go bowling, bowling is so expensive right now. Or you go to a movie or whatever you're going to go for, uh, you have a very comparable, especially in draft, uh, entertainment value because you're playing for so long. Uh, draft in my place goes on for about two and a half. A lot of you guys are, think I'm crazy, but my pre-releases they last until they go from like 10 p.m. is when people show up and hang out, 
and like get food. So if you don't get like there about 10 p.m., they will get food without you, which kind of sucks, but whatever. And 10 p.m. until like 10 a.m. or 9 a.m. Uh, by the time you get home, it's like 10 a.m. So it's like 12 hours of playing Magic for 25 bucks or $30 for a pre-release. And like some ice cream. Clearly, I eat so much ice cream that like if I didn't exercise, I would, I don't know what would happen. I guess I would have to stop eating ice cream. <laughs> but I eat so much ice cream at this place at pre-release. I just like stuff. Uh, anyway, that's a totally different topic. Um, it is good value. Uh, it keeps you out of trouble. It keeps you, and you, the people you meet, for the most part, are really good people. And it's not uncommon for people to introduce you to other people so you can get a job. I mean, it's not unheard of. And definitely at, in Virginia, uh, one of the kids who played at my locals, um, whatever his name was, he got two of the people who played at locals like a job in lawn care. And that was actually very good because at that time they didn't have a job. And then one of them got a job, another one of them a job at Chili's, uh, which I went to just like I go. I, I feel like every local magic store is next to a Chili's. Now that I kind of, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, even the one in New York City was next to a Chili's. Like the only Chili's in like all of the city, I feel. Anyway, uh, it is, you meet good people. It is intellectually stimulating. Uh, the cost isn't that high, especially if you can resell it before rotation. And the last part about, you know, why I believe magic is not a waste of money is how many, how cool is it that you can have a magic channel? How cool is it that you guys can watch magic video and be excited about it? So not only the entertainment value coming from you physically playing at a local store or magic online, but like you watching the pro tour, you talking about decks, you watching YouTube videos about magic. I mean, that all, if you didn't have magic as a hobby, why would you watch the pro tour? Or you didn't like magic or you had a different hobby. You wouldn't watch the pro tour, right? You wouldn't read the Reddit. You wouldn't talk on Facebook groups. You wouldn't do magic altars. You wouldn't do all this stuff that you're doing right now. I mean, if you're watching this video, you're what you're getting value from magic not from me not from the channel but from magic because otherwise why would you be watching this video right and so that is the biggest uh reason that magic is not a waste of money because for entertainment value it goes beyond just you know or you're sitting at home you're organizing cards which is very nice i like organizing cards sometimes sometimes not all the time and or you're looking at your trade binder and you're looking at all this stuff brings me enjoyment I'm assuming it brings you enjoyment too. collecting cards trading cards all this fun stuff uh, definitely reorganizing my trade binder and like finding like cards that are valuable now that didn't used to be valuable back then speculation is kind of fun I don't do it for money I do it because it's fun and at the end of the day I just have a whole bunch of this one card that I put in one of these binders and that's that so magic is not a waste of money at all um, compared to like other stuff you could be doing uh, at the time and uh, definitely uh, you know if your parents or your girlfriend or boyfriend is telling magic is a waste of money I feel like you should just like say hey you know present it as entertainment value and you're getting a lot of entertainment value for the money you're putting in bye guys